Let's go beyond our own mod even more. Let's create a hero's dependency. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back on GitHub once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to add a curious dependency to our mod. This actually comes suggested and is actually a fairly straightforward thing to actually implement. Similar to how we have made the JEI integration, we're now going to add a curious dependency to our mod. So that means that our mod actually requires curious to work. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. You don't necessarily have to have a dependency for it. However, we're going to do it as a dependency. So in order to play our tutorial mod, you actually have to have Curios installed. That's just the way that we're going to do it in this tutorial. Once again, when you have an API, the mod authors should have a Maven repository here as well as some dependencies right here. And we can simply copy over the Maven URL and once again, switch back to IntelliJ and go into our build.gradle file and simply add it here in our repositories. So simply paste it in here. And then at the very bottom where we have the JEI dependency, we can simply copy over the dependencies here as well and add them just below the JEI dependency. Of course, we have to specify the specific version and we can do that by basically going to this URL. Usually the Maven URLs are accessible and they have sort of an index here and I've already gone through the folder structure and this would be the version that we want to take. So we're simply going to copy this and then paste it in here the, where the version is. There you go. And once that is pasted in, we can now load the Gradle changes and we're just going to let this run. This can take up to a couple of seconds, maybe a minute or so. I was lucky it only took four seconds. That's pretty nice. So let this run and be patient there. And then we can actually start to implement something. Right. The first thing we're going to do is in our tutorial mod class, we're actually going to implement something in the onQimc IMC method. I know it's it's pretty crazy but we actually have to send a message into mod communication. So we're going to say intermod comms dot send to curious. And then we're going to say slot type message dot register type and then a supplier slot type preset dot charm dot get message builder dot build. What this will do is it will enable the charm slot on well, the curio inventory. And this is basically the way that you can enable certain types of slots. You can also go into the slot tribe reset enum here. And you can see there are a couple of enums that are available for us. So there's a bag, there's ring, belt, bracelet, hands, and so on. So there's a few slots that you could add. You can also add your own custom slots, interestingly enough. That's something we're not going to do in this tutorial, but that is possible as well. Once this has been done, the slot is now actually in game. And now we, of course, have to have something that we want to put into it. And we're going to use the Firestone as an example. So what we want to do is we want this to implement iCurio item. And the iCurio item, if I middle mouse button click on this, you can see that this interface has a few things that we can override here. And the thing we want to override is the Curio tick method right Right here and that's going to be called every tick and we're going to add it so that when the player actually has the firestone equipped in the charm slot then the player will get fire resistance so first of all we're going to say player entity player is equal to player entity living entity so we're going to cast the living entity into a player entity and then we're going to say player dot world dot is remote and we'll basically say that this is not the case so that we are on the server when we are on the server we can proceed and then we will make a boolean has player fire resistance and that's going to be equal to the following so this is going to be equal to so exclamation mark objects dot equals and we're going to say player dot get active potion effects with effects dot fire resistance and then null so why is that the case the idea being as you can see the get active potion effects is a nullable so this effect instance will actually return null if the player does not have this effect. Therefore, we're going to say, okay, is this null? If this is the case, then we know that the player doesn't have fire resistance and then we will flip it. Does the player have fire resistance? And then we're going to say if has fire resistance and once again, flipping this. So we actually want this to only happen when the player does not have fire resistance. And if the player does not have fire resistance, then we will add it. So player add potion effect, new effect instance, effect start fire resistance, and then let's say for 10 seconds. This duration, of course, is in ticks. That is why it's 200. So we will only add the potion effect when the player doesn't actually have fire resistance already. And then we will also damage the item. So we're going to say random dot next float is bigger than, let's say, for example, 60. So we basically have a 40% chance of this being damaged. And we're going to say stack dot damage item amount one with the player. And we're going to say P. And the break animation is actually going to be the curious API dot get curious helper dot on broken curio. We're going to say slot type 
preset.charm.getidentifier, and then we're gonna say index p, and then we can close it like this. So that's one of the things that is very interesting. The broken animation for the curio, you actually need to get the curio server and then for the unbroken curio here, and then that's gonna work. And that's actually all that we need in order to add the functionality to our Firestone. Of course, there are almost no limits on what you can do. There's also certain other methods that you can, of course, override as well. So this is really up to you how you wanna do this and how you want to create your own curio. Right, and this is almost all that we need to do. There's one more thing that we need to specify so that the Firestone can actually be put into the slot that we want. And that is going to be a tag that we need to add. So in our data folder, new directory, curios, and then in that directory, right click new directory tags, and then items. And inside of there, we're going to create a new file called charm.json. And I'm going to quickly copy this over. This is, of course, a normal tag like you've seen multiple times already, probably. And this will simply make it so that the fire zone can be added into the charm slot. Now, one last optional thing is inside of our mods.taml file, we can add a dependency here. At the bottom here, where we have the dependencies, I highly recommend doing this, even though this is optional. The idea is that you can add dependencies. You can see that those two here, as you can see, are Forge or Minecraft. Those are always gonna be the case. I'm simply gonna quickly copy over what we have. This is, of course, available in the description below. And this will simply say, okay, dependencies dot, and then your mod ID, and then the mod ID of the mod that you want a dependency for. And then here you put in the version range. So this would be that this is the version that it requires at least, and then anything above that. So that's sort of what this means. If a person would have our mod, our tutorial mod, and would start Minecraft, then they would get the, hey, this mod requires dependency curios with these versions. That's the idea here. And that's why we would want to add this so that people actually know, okay, why is this not working? Oh, I have to add curios as well. This is why I really recommend doing this. If you have multiple dependencies, do put that in there. And now let's see if it works. Or we found ourselves in Minecraft and let's see. So I already have two Firestones. And as you can see, if I hover over it, slot charm so that already works and the curios button here has been added as well and the charm slot is in there as well so let's see if i put the firestone in here i now have fire resistance for 10 seconds and it has a 40 percent chance once it adds the fire resistance again to my character that it gets damaged there it is now it has been damaged once and this is going to go down until the actual item is well breaks and this is, of course, because we actually put in max damage for the Firestone. This has been quite a long while ago when we actually made the Firestone the advanced item where we added some max damage. Right, and this is how easy it can be to add the Curious Dependency to your mod. All things considered, I actually don't think that it's too crazy. And it's actually really easy. You can, of course, also check out the GitHub repository for the Curious mod. They have some good guides on there as well. So that is also available to you. But that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. But of course, I appreciate a like if you did. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.